In your presence, O God, I publicly express sorrow for the many sins by which I have offended you. I resolve to amend my life, to approve and sanctify, endeavoring henceforth to serve you faithfully all the days of my life. I ask all those who dwell within the Church of Christ, the Blessed Mother Mary, the Holy Apostles, the Martyrs, and Faithful, who have lived and suffered and died for the Gospel of Jesus Christ, as well as you, my brothers and sisters, to witness my confession and pray for me to our Lord God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, most gracious Father, that with purity of heart, we may worthily fulfill this holy action, establish the remembrance of the Last Supper and the death of Jesus Christ and for our sanctification and salvation. Be present among us, Jesus, our most perfect master, because you said there were two or three are gathered together in my name, you are among them. We also ask, Lord, that through this holy liturgy, we may experience a spiritual revival and a better understanding of your holy will, bringing us together in one great family, guided by your commandments and by love, truth, and justice. Amen. And may we say together, let us pray for the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, indivisible, revealed in triune power for all time, now and forever. Glory to God in the highest, and peace with people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you to your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receiving our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. here on earth, you poured into their hearts the graces of faith, love, and sacrifice. On this day we dedicate to the honor of all of our fathers. We ask you to bless the fathers of our congregation and of our communities. Empower them to lovingly fulfill the obligations that you have set before them as they look to the example of St. Joseph. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God forever and ever. Amen. This morning's reading is taken from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, they all look to you to give them food in due time. Alleluia, alleluia. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God, as you cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah in a burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me so I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bread that came down.
down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And he said to them, Truly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike their ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Long enough, we'll get used to it. 
And this is where I'd like to make the transition over to Father's Day. There's a huge difference between fathering a child and simply being a father. It takes but a moment to father a child, but it takes time to become a father. Time to build a relationship with your child or your children. It's really an investment. Time is a precious thing to a lot of fathers. They don't have a whole lot of spare time. So when they give time to their families, when they invest themselves in their families, he becomes more and more the father. When his example of right and wrong is not only spoken, but it is lived, well, then that man becomes more and more a father. When a man is slow to anger, constant in support, available and loving to his family, a man becomes more and more a father. And these are the men that we honor today on Father's Day. Now, I like to joke about Father's Day about being almost an afterthought when compared to Mother's Day. Father's Day came, a lot long, came along a lot longer in our national history, almost six full decades after Mother's Day. There's less spent on Father's Day, there are fewer calls made, there are fewer cards sold, and I make these comments always tongue-in-cheek, which I hope you know by now, and you know, as I walked into church, there were a few laughs and chuckles and all that because of the weather, and you know, it's killing me that we're inside instead of outside because of that uncertain weather. I would have had a, such a huge, big smile on my face if after a really cold, rainy Mother's Day where it almost snowed, that instead we were outside on a sunny, breezy Father's Day, you know, kind of would have evened out all of those other inequalities, but it's just not to be this year. But as a father myself, and I may be speaking only for myself, and I don't know, but we don't like to be exposed to a lot of that sentimental awkwardness of speaking out loud about fatherhood. It just kind of makes us squirm a little bit. And that goes also for a father having to give a Father's Day sermon. It's a little bit awkward. So fathers sometimes joke about it instead. One father of teenagers said that he didn't want his boys to make a lot out of Father's Day, but he would have been really ticked off if they completely forgot about it. Fatherhood is important. Acknowledge that, but don't dwell on it is what I think he's trying to say. Another father was asked what he wanted for Father's Day, and his quick automatic reply, I want my 28-year-old son out of the house. <laughs> you know, a mother doesn't say things like that. Fathers do. And I'm spending today with Sharon and Amanda and Kristen out in Boston, and I'm really going to play that Father's Day card. I won't even drive the car today because, you know, it's Father's Day, and I don't have to do a whole of that. <laughs> Hey, look at the father way over there. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to play that Father's Day card because I don't want to drive out to Boston, so I'm going to sit in the back with my Boston Globe and enjoy myself. And I hope you saw the cartoon at the back of the, uh, the song sheet today. And there's that father resting under the tree, and it says, this little sign there, it's Father's Day. Don't bother me. And I like that. And I chose that cartoon because when I saw it, I really laughed out loud and how angry the mother looked as she saw her husband getting away with having to do nothing at all. And I can get away with putting that kind of a cartoon in today's song sheet because it's Father's Day and I'm a father. So in that cartoon though, you see that little book that's lying, you know, uh, half read while he's taking his little nap? I sure hope it's not Mary Shelley's book, Frankenstein, which will be celebrating its 200th anniversary next year. I don't know if you know it, but Frankenstein is a story about fatherhood, and it's a scary, and it's an unfortunate one. But you can't cheat. you got to read the book. You can't watch Boris Karloff in the movie, because the two are completely different. In the movie, Dr. Frankenstein accidentally implants an abnormal, murderer's brain in this creature, and we all know what happens after that, with that abnormal, murderer's brain up there. But in the book, it's not the creature's fault that he becomes a monster. It's Dr. Frankenstein's fault, the creature's father. The doctor is repulsed by his creation. The doctor, the father, rejects his creation. And because that creature isn't loved by the one who gave him life, because he's not loved by the father, he acts out against those who are loved by the father. So he is in love, so that means that he's going to take away the chance for Dr. Frankenstein to love anyone else. So the book is a cautionary tale. To create life is one thing, but to love, that's the difference, and that's the defining essence of fatherhood. You don't have to give birth to the child to be a father. 
And we have the perfect example in Job, but you do have to love. If you're a biological father or if you're the adoptive father, it doesn't matter. It's the love that matters. Fathers can't give birth. And some see the horrible consequences of such envy in the book Frankenstein, written by Mary Shelley. And a lot of you mothers have told me time and time again that if fathers had to go through childbirth, there would be no more children anyway. But fathers, we have to love, even if we can't give birth. And the more that we practice that loving and caring fatherhood, the more natural it becomes. It takes time to be a father, and those are the men that we honor today. Both the fathers with us, the fathers in our communities, and the fathers who have passed their eternal rewards. We honor them for the time that they share with their families. So may God bless the men who take their families seriously and who share themselves lovingly with them. And may they enjoy this special day, even if it means doing nothing at all, because this is the day that belongs to fathers. And for them we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty Lord, as we gather on this Father's Day, we do offer our prayers for all the fathers of our church and of our community. We ask the Lord to bless them and to help them in their sacred responsibilities. We also offer prayers in memory of Frederick F. Warren on Father's Day is offered by his daughter, Barbara, and her family. We offer prayers for Anita Vishnesky on the 18th anniversary of her death, is offered by Sharon Calvo and the Calvo family. We offer prayers for the soul of Ada Gripko, who would have been 100 years old, as offered by Cindy Benjamin. We offer prayers for Blanche Zyko, who had surgery this past week, is offered by Pat Blakesley. We offer prayers for Erin Chudrin and her classmates as she travels to the Dominican Republic to build a house for the needy, as offered by the Chudrin family. We offer our prayers for Richard uh, Slalom, Slalom White um, as he is beginning to undergo chemotherapy, as offered by Marianne Foster. We offer prayers for Liz Bridgman battling cancer and raising three young girls on her own. Alex, a 16-year-old with lymphoma Hodgkin's disease, and Alicia, a young mother of three with stage four breast cancer, is all offered by Cindy Benjamin. We continue to offer prayers for Bishop Thomas Ganas' health and for the well-being of his wife, Catherine, as offered by myself. We also offer prayers for Meg Connors, as offered by Ellen and Don Sprosky, uh, Richard Poe by the Poe and Foster families, um, Jack Soleil, a young child, is offered by Mary Anna Foster. Are there any other intentions that you would like to offer from the congregation? You guys are getting shy out there. Okay. For all these prayers, Lord, plus the private ones that we bring before you and the privacy of our thoughts, we also ask the Lord to bless each and every one of us here gathered and be with those of our parish who are unable to be with us here today and those of our parish who have chosen not to be with us here today. And for these things together, Lord, we pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day of the earth, and bring us to the earth, and bring us to the earth, and bring us to the earth. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God. Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and happy of one being of the Father. Through him all things are made, for us and for our salvation, he became bound in heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born in the Virgin Mary, and then he came in. For our sake, he was crucified under the conscious He suffered death and was buried. 
He renews the sacrifice on our altars, giving us himself as food in the most blessed sacrament. Therefore the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy. Therefore, most merciful Father, for Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, most humbly beseech you to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy, unspotted sacrifices, which your holy church receives from you, imploring you to defend and guide her throughout the world, together with her priests and all true believers of the holy faith. Remember, Lord, your servant. imbued with faith in your holy care, your rule and fatherly love. Wholeheartedly this day, unite in spirit with all of them, even the most blessed Mother Mary, Mother of Jesus Christ, likewise as apostles with all the countless hosts of martyrs and confessors who lived, labored, and suffered for the same holy cause for which Jesus Christ sacrificed his life and his most precious blood. Just as they believe, profess, and united with you through prayer and this immaculate oblation, which you have instituted from the beginning of the world and in time have fulfilled through Jesus Christ and gave it to humanity as a pledge of eternal salvation. So we too this day profess and unite ourselves with you, most gracious Father, in humbleness of spirit, and accept from your hands this holy bread and this precious chalice as a longed-for gift bestowed on us by the Savior of the world as spiritual food and drink. He promised us this food and drink in that moment when he revealed his divine power by the multiplication of bread and feeding with a hungry multitude of people. Afterward, you were told to give him that food and drink to his disciples and friends as a more excellent nourishment when he said, It is my Father who gives you the real heavenly bread. I myself, the living bread, come down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he shall live forever. The bread I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And afterwards, when the temporal and messianic life of the divine teacher and dear the covenant was drawing to a close, he gathered into the upper room. All of those we loved in a singular way, and had chosen to continue his work of salvation. He spoke to them words of deep love, longing, and resolve. I will not leave you orphaned, I will come back to you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Do not be distressed or fearful. You will suffer in the world, but take courage. I have overcome the world. If you live in me, and my words stay a part of you, you may ask what you will, and it will be done for you. Anyone who loves me will be true to my word, and my Father will love him, we will come to him, and make our dwelling place with him. I consecrate myself for their sakes now, that they may be consecrated in truth, that they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I in you, I pray that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I living in them, you living in me, that their unity may be made complete. Father, all those you gave me, I would have in my company, where I am to see this glory of mine, which is your gift to me, because of the love you bore me before the world began. I myself am the bread of life. No one who comes to me shall ever be hungry. No one who believes in me shall ever thirst. After these and other words of the archpriestly prayer and with holy fervor, the Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, Again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, mindful, Lord, 
we your servants and your faithful people, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son and our Lord, as well as his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we receive from your own gifts and presents a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. These gifts we receive for the joyful countenance as from him, who is the giver of all temple and eternal good gifts, and with an unshakable faith that they will become for our souls a saving remedy. We humbly ask, you, Almighty God, to command that our offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar into the presence of your divine majesty. That we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son to this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who have passed on to eternity. souls, Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, grant everlasting life, and to those who are life straight from the path of righteousness, that mindful of your fatherly love, mercifully shorten their suffering. We ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, self heart and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints, who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts are always open to justice and mercy. And with lives patterned after their divine master, merit an eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, and with him, and in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Take away the sins of the world, 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching, and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused for my judgment. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing self, uh, servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this who lives reigns of God the Father in the unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Now take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. shall I return to the Lord for all the graces that he has given me. I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body to the Lord. Body and the blood of 
body and the blood of Christ. The 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 body and the blood of Christ.
and appreciative Father, spirit of love and self-denial, through the incarnation of your Son, Jesus, you showed us the love of the Father that he has for his children and the way to truth, life, and understanding. We ask that through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. For your mercy may be effective for myself and all of those for whom I have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found light, life and the light of men. The light shines on in darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through Him all may believe, but only to testify to the light, for He Himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, and his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These and they who believe in his name were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's holiness, but by God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. 